We all know about pulp magazines in the 1930s and 40s like The Shadow, or Doc Savage, or Black Mask, or Weird Tales. But today, we're going to talk about The Spices, that curiously risque, edgy, and transgressive subgenre of pulp, and focus on Hugh Ward, the cover artist who was the absolute master of the spices. While most of the world struggled through the Great Depression, the demand for pulp magazines continually grew, yet most new titles were short-lived and the battle for market share was fierce, with every issue struggling for an edge over the others that would get the customer's dime or quarter, and cover art was a huge part of the appeal. Some pulps like Black Mask, Amazing Tales, and Weird Tales gained readership by the excellent writing, creating in the process modern forms of genre fiction, detective, science fiction, and fantasy. Some magazines gained sales with returning heroes like Doc Savage or The Shadow or Operator 5 who brought a tsunami of hope and adventure to a world that seemed both bleak and spinning out of control. But the quickest and easiest path to great sales were mixing up those eternal staples, sex and violence, in a risque package that flouted the conventions and standards of the day. Detective magazines were booming, but there were dozens in competition with each other. So how about Spicy Detective? Westerns were always a big draw, but the market in Westerns was crowded, so sex it up and add spicy to the title and science fiction and adventure were thrilling millions, so how about spicy adventure? There were other keywords, snappy, naughty, but all these terms fell under the umbrella spicy. And many spices had covers so risque, you won't find them in most photos of newsstands, at least not on display, but there they were, under or over the counter, and all you had to do was ask, got any spices? The clerk reaches for a couple magazines, already knowing the covers are going to seal the deal. And how did they seal the deal? That would be Hugh Ward. For Ward didn't only load every rift with sex and violence, but often added an element of intense drama that spun an instant visual narrative absorbing enough to ensnare the customer before they even read a word. Like what's really going on here seems obvious, right? Maybe not so much. It's wartime, and a woman has driven a long distance and needs to stop for the night. Ah, cozy in. Perfect. The beautiful sky. Just what is needed. Take two. All the spices are to some extent about voyeurism, but this must be one of the most explicitly voyeuristic scenes in all pulp illustrations. The man's head is just inches from her panties, and not to push the point, but they're pretty damn close in color to being inner labial pink. Take three. It's a potential murder scene, right? But what's the outcome? What do we really know from this image? Well, the woman's athletic enough to have dived through her cozy cottage window in a bid to escape. And she's strong enough to have scaled a phone pole. And unlike her potential killer, she's got a solid grip on the crossbar. So the fella's got a knife, but only a single arm hugging the pole. It's precarious for him, even before he's thrown off balance by swinging his arm back for the thrust of the knife. The guy's barely holding on, and there's her foot poised, ready to mash down on his face. What we're really seeing is the judo moment, when the assailant is most vulnerable. Ward has given us the decisive make-or-break moment, perhaps in her entire life, the moment when her strike will have maximum impact. Her thigh is up and her shoe's about to smash into his face with all the adrenaline of a single chance to live and all the strength of walking miles a day, city miles over pavement for its 1944, and she's part of the wartime workforce that enabled the Allies to win. She's a hero, and that fella, he's busy stalking women while other men his age are dying in Europe or Asia in the fight against tyranny. The heel of her pump looks like a perfect fit for his mouth. A heel for a heel. I think that psycho's about to take the fall, his teeth scattered round him as he bleeds out, stabbed on the ground by his own knife. That's my bet, but I gotta know. And so the sale is made. All right, Hugh Ward, King of the Spices, I've used mostly covers where the original art is available in high resolution, and so release this in 4K to do full justice to Hugh Ward's 